Since the beginning of mankind, humans have been questioning the value of a life. It is widely regarded as one of the most precious things we possess, and many people think that we should do whatever we can to save one, no matter the cost. Thousands of people each year are in dire need of an organ to save their life, but the conditions for harvesting one is rare enough that thousands of them die waiting. As the FDA states in xenotransplantation, the development of xenotransplantation is, in part, driven by the fact that the demand for human organs for clinical transplantations far exceeds the supply. But if we could find a source that is easy to farm, inexpensive to raise, and has organs that are compatible with our own, would it not be best to exploit that? While it may be right to save a human's life, would it be right to take another creature's life to do so? In Dan Lyon's Organ Farm, he says that pigs would be a great candidate for this role, biologically, but they are, quote, at least as smart as dogs. Even with the benefit of saving a human life, it is unethical to use the organs from a healthy, live pig only to prolong the life of an already deteriorating other life form in which you deprive the pig of the rest of its life. The first problem with xenotransplantation is that you sometimes can't ask the human if they want the organ because they are unconscious or unable to respond. In these cases, while it is lawful for a relative or guardian to give permission for the organ to be transplanted, it is unethical because the person receiving the organ is the one who will have to live with it for the rest of their life. In Xenotransplantation, Science, Ethics, and Public Policy, Gloria B., someone who is considered receiving a pig kidney, says, My immediate reaction was, I wouldn't say anger, probably a bit of disgust with myself mixed with confusion because the whole process was so foreign to me, and I felt almost like a giddy pig, and they were doing anything just to keep me alive. The same problem also applies to the pig, where you can't ask if it's okay to take its organ. We may not be able to know their thoughts, but we do know that pigs experience emotions. A pig that is able to understand happiness and loss would be more important to society compared to a human who is unable to have any coherent thoughts at all. In The Ethics Debate in Relation to Xenotransplantation by Smetanka C. and D.K.C. Cooper, they say, For example, a healthy chimpanzee who is an important social member in a group of chimpanzees and who demonstrates a degree of intelligence and emotion with which we can identify may be a more worthy member of the animal kingdom than a severely brain-damaged human subject who has been in a vegetative state for many years, or an anencephalic infant who will never be aware that he or she is loved and will never be able to return that love. The person who sits in a catatonic state for the majority of their life also uses many more resources than an animal used in farming or other professions. If pigs were to be used for xenotransplantation, they would have to be factory farmed, and that would be verging on animal cruelty, if not heartlessness. In Organ Farm, Lyons says that if there are strictly xenotransplantation-centered organ farms for pigs, that piglets would have to be born by cesarean section rather than being born naturally and having a bond with their mothers. The separation of the sow from the piglet normally would not be allowed because it's very important for the piglet's health, both psychologically and physically, for it to have a relationship with its mother, but it would have to happen if pigs would be farmed for the organs to be completely sterile. In Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the monster asks his creator frustratedly why he so wantonly bestows life. While xenotransplantation is a revolutionary idea, it is also a relatively new one. When taking an organ from an animal and giving it to a human, there are many things that could go wrong, and, based on history, a very low success rate. In A Brief History of Cross-Species Organ Transplantation, it references Keith Reemsma, a scientist who did experiments involving xenotransplantation in the 80s. He says, Most of the transplants failed in four to eight weeks, either from rejection, because of the limited number of immunosuppressive agents at the time, or from an infectious complication, because of the over-administration of these agents. Even if you try to genetically edit the risk of rejection out, you'd still have to go through a process to make each pig fit one specific organ and make them an entirely different type of pig. Jonathan Allen, a virologist, says in The Transplant Imaginary, there is virtually no way to eliminate the known infectious agents, which means that people would also have to take medicine to maintain the organ for the rest of their life. And when we alter the pig's genetics one way, there is also a possibility that it will alter them in another way that will harm them. In Daniel Key's Flowers for Algernon, Charlie receives a transplant that works, but also shortens his lifespan. If the pig is used for organ donation, it will almost surely be killed or forced to spend the rest of its life in a special care facility, and that's if it isn't accidentally killed by an unknown flaw in its genetic editing first. It wouldn't be able to live its life like it should, or reproduce lest it create an undesirable child. While the meat industry seems to be doing something very similar to xenotransplantation, they are actually very different. While they do take animal lives to sustain human ones, they do that for a wide variety of humans, most of them healthy and not already dying. 
Yes, there are some meat factories that are extremely gruesome and horrible places to raise pigs, but there are also humane places with ways to raise pigs that would be used for meat, such as letting them mature, which would not be possible in xenotransplantation because of the need for young, fresh, and healthy organs. The meat industry also uses as much of the pig as possible, while xenotransplantation would only take one or two organs before the pig dies or is considered too expensive to raise with life support. The pig would essentially be used as an incubator for the organ and then discarded like a toy that a kid doesn't want anymore. Recently, the first children said to be genetically protected from HIV have been born. With genetic editing, animal testing, and other bioethical issues becoming more and more prominent in the world, it is only a matter of time before xenotransplantation comes up. When something is newly scientifically possible, people tend to immediately experiment and fixate on it if we think it'll benefit us without a second thought. Sometimes, people can do good things by pushing the boundaries of what we know and benefit the Earth as a whole. But in reality, we should stop and consider, is what's best for us really the right thing to do?